have Dr. Donna Nekshu. She is an integrative medical doctor. I met her about two years ago, I believe, yes. during my clinical rotation. And she is here with us today to tell us a little bit about her practice and philosophy in integrative medicine. Hi, guys. Hi there. <laughs> Hi, Daisy. Hi. So you grew up in Romania, went to medical school there, and mm -hmm. then moved to New Jersey for your residency. Mm -hmm. So you got to experience a little bit of like what is medicine in Romania and got to compare it here in America. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest difference in the healthcare system? Um, definitely things that I like about uh, the system here, the access to certain medications mm -hmm. and surgeries and testing procedures, it's incomparable with the rest of the world. Back home though, people do have access, it's more of a universal health insurance, mm -hmm. so they do have access to the hospitals, it's just not always to the best and newest medications and, 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 and doctors. So they, most of the time, try to manage their illnesses with herbs at home and yeah. you know what their grandma taught them and trying to stay healthy so that preventative part it's a little bit more uh, used back home than than here what um made you decide to practice integrative medicine from conventional medicine i think it all started when my daughter was born that was when I start asking myself, how can I, um, you know, treat her the best if she has a minor cold? How can I make her feel better without using medications? And how can I choose the best foods for her? Mm -hmm. And from there, for the next couple of years, I kind of applied the same mentality for my patients. And then I would notice that you have the same patients again and again, they'll come in the hospital and they'll have the same symptoms. And then you give them a medication, they will get better, maybe four two, three days, and they'll end up in the hospital again because we're not really treating the cause of an illness, right? We're not mm -hmm. teaching them how to, how to solve the problem. We're just kind of give them a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. So I realized there was, a, there was a gap in my education. I did not know a lot about diet mm -hmm. um, or any other methods and how can you help your body heal. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to school and did a little bit of research and found Dr. Um, Andrew Wiles fellowship and uh, went and completed that uh, two-year fellowship and it was amazing because I got to know everything from herbs to acupuncture and when to use it safely. For everyone out there who is curious about the medical trajectory path, you actually have to go into four years of medical school and then after that you do residency and then a fellowship where then you can get certified in integrative medicine, which is what you did. Um, the word integrative and holistic is very yes. common nowadays. Yeah, you mm -hmm. get to see it in a lot of clinics and medical mm -hmm. facilities. And if you are looking for a health professional who's very versed in this type of practice, you want mm -hmm. to look for the credentials, so the ed education and the training that one's mm -hmm. receive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely, and I think these terms can be confusing. I personally like the term integrative mm -hmm. because I think we should use the best from both words, conventional mm -hmm. medicine and alternative medicine, right? We've seen patients when they'll come up with high blood pressure, right? I'm not gonna send a patient with a blood pressure of 200 home and wait for the supplements to work yeah. because it's gonna take time and you want your patient to be safe. I might give them a medication for maybe one week or two, but meantime we'll work on the foods they would eat and stress reduction and certain supplements. Mm -hmm. That's integrated medicine. And I personally think that's how we should all practice. And it's my hope that eventually we all practice like that. Mm -hmm. Now the functional medicine term, um, it's also used as well. And they use the same, it's the same philosophy. They also look at supplements and how we can help a person with the right uh, uh, testing and so forth. But they like the testing part a little bit more, all that biochemistry testing, hormonal testing. And I think for certain patients that motivates them. When they see that on paper, when they see the results, especially when they're bad ones, they say, oops, I really have to change the way I you know, manage my my, uh, you know, my stress and so forth. But Dr. Andrew Wah would say, okay, well, you get your testing, right? But you still go back to basics, right? You still have to talk them about diet, stress reduction and supplements. Mm -hmm. So, but again, everybody has their own uh, preference. I'm somewhere probably in the middle. I, I do think testing is important, so I do use it quite a lot. The other difference I would say, I think uh, you can have a functional medicine practitioner that's not a doctor, so mm -hmm. a lot of times they cannot use medication. So depending on what 
illness you might have, that's going to be important for you to, to understand. Yeah. In 20 years of you practicing medicine, what is the most common medical condition that you see nowadays? Oh, definitely the adrenal fatigue, okay. um, stress related. So the adrenals are two tiny glands that sit on top of our kidneys, as mm -hmm. you know. Tiny but mighty because you, know, it's, you have all the strong hormones there, right? You have your cortisol, you have your adrenaline or adrenaline, some of the sex hormones precursor, so extremely important for our health. Now the conventional medicine recognizes the Addison disease, mm -hmm. where the cortisol level is so low, that's life-threatening, and you need to be on hormone replacement therapy for your whole life, basically. The adrenal fatigue looks at how you feel, how you carry on during the daily activities, how well you feel. Do you feel exhausted by two o'clock in the afternoon? Do you get sick a lot? Uh, do you develop in time all sorts of other ailments like your gut doesn't feel well, you don't digest your food well, you start having some, some issues related with your thyroid. So the way I explain it to my uh, patients is, uh, you know, think about your dream vacation and you're trying to drive there, right? And you, you drive in a nice car versus an old beat up car. So you're gonna make it there eventually, but the experience is completely different. Mm -hmm. Uh, with adrenal fatigue patients, they feel exhausted by the time they wake up in the morning. They don't feel like getting out of bed to begin with, and it just gets worse from there. When your adrenals are in uh, good shape, everything is working well, you wake up, you're energetic, you, you go through your day, you, you just you feel well. And I think people, until people feel like that, they don't realize what they miss. Yeah, It's, yeah. it's amazing to, to see. I often see the word adrenal fatigue nowadays uh, associated with the words like burnout or mm -hmm. wired and tired. And it's kind of those like subtle symptoms that people don't feel like they need to go see a doctor. They just kind of go on day by day not feeling good and not having the maximal like energy. They think it's expected. Yeah. They got used to it and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's such a shame. What are some adrenal supplements you can recommend to some of our audience? Just to start, I would recommend a, um, something called adaptogen, an adaptogen. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, this is a, a group of plants. Um, something maybe you've heard about ashwagandha yeah. or rhodiola or ginseng, holy basil, all of those. And they have an interesting capacity of helping your body or meeting your body needs at a specific point. So let's say you are, like you said before, wired and tired. That specific plant will help your body calm down. But if you're one of, or you have one of those moments when you cannot get out of bed, your energy level is so low, it will definitely boost up the hormone production, will make you, will give you that energy oomph and will help mm -hmm. you go through, through the day. They do have different other particular effects on the body. So for example, the ashwagandha I would use for somebody who also needs immunity boost. I would use rhodiola for somebody who has maybe some depression associated with adrenal fatigue. So they're a little bit different, but as a group or as a class, they're excellent for, for the adrenal fatigue. What other common popular supplements out there that you would recommend? Fish oil supplement and or magne or both actually and magnesium supplement um, the magnesium uh, supplement it's it's extremely important because despite the fact that's easily found in food we don't always absorb it well and then it's it's so much used by our body right all those chemistry reactions mm -hmm. everything uses magnesium so it's when I test my patients I found that almost everybody's either deficient or, or just borderline and functional medicine believes in not just being okay. We want those levels be at optimal uh, numbers. So I do encourage a lot of my patients to, to start taking it. So magnesium helps with sleep. You can try to take it half an hour, one hour before bedtime. You can start with a low dose, 100 milligrams, maybe 200 milligrams. What types of magnesium are out there? Uh, there are different types, and um, you have magnesium oxide, magnesium citrate. Those are more for th those are the ones that I use for gut health, because it will help the people with constipation, irregular bowel movements, or or even reflux. But if I want to use somebody with headaches, which is great, um, that's another thing that I wanted to mention about magnesium. It helps preventing the headaches. Then I would choose something like a chelated form 
because it's easily absorbed by the body. And then you start with about the same, uh, the same dose. Mm-hmm. And of course we use in the hospital a different one, a stronger version of yeah. the magnesium as you, as you know. And uh, which one do you take personally? I take the chelated form, okay. the glycinate. The glycinate, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, have you actually heard of magnesium threonate? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yes. the one that's also, I think, um, also very specific to, for brain, yes. um, anxiety-related type of stress. Mm-hmm. Yes, that that's sense. a different one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you like that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I need it. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about fish oil and omega-3s. Yes, I know we mentioned earlier. So it's another extremely popular supplement. And, uh, you know, the studies were a bit controversial, but I think part of the problem is that supplements they use for the studies are not always the best and they're not always the best dose. I do like the fish oil because it's because of its anti-inflammatory effect. Mm-hmm. The only uh, caution with the fish oil other than you know some people do experience some fishy aftertaste you want to be cautioned people with bleeding disorder or okay. people who would take any sorts of blood thinners. At some point at higher dosages about four grams a day of the fish oil you can have some interaction, or at least in theory. So I always caution people with that. But you said two grams is... Two grams, it's a... It's a a good dose to start with. It's a therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So omega-3s, people need to look at DHA if they want it to be more brain health specific, Mm -hmm. and EPA if uh, more heart health specific. But I want to go back to brain health because I think that's something that a lot of people are looking into nowadays. People don't realize you have to take care of your brain the same way you take care of your body and your heart. And you have to start early enough. Lately, there's there's a lot of research and there are so many things that you can do in order to preserve that cognitive function. And, um, you know, starting with you know how they tell you always learn something and exercise your brain which is it's 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 true but just doing something simple like checking all your minerals and Mm -hmm. antioxidants in your body and making sure those levels are optimal that's already a huge step you are just giving your brain what the brain needs, all the fuel that it needs. You want to minimize the stress, you want to use meditation or anything that will yeah. relax your brain right for five minutes it's amazing how much we can we can do these days as long as you're aware of that and and people start looking into that at early age yeah speaking of supplements i know that people can easily get it at farmer's market and order it online but what are some safety precautions some people should or all of us should keep in mind before taking them. Mm -hmm. When you buy a supplement, you want to at least look for certain seals on the label, something like uh, NSF, something like United States Pharmacopeia, or you can go online and search this uh, uh, third-party agency, it's called Consumer Labs, where you can get a report about, let's say, um, the most trusted brands of uh, over-the-counter fish oil. So at least you have a better idea what what to buy. The second part, I would always caution people, you know, just because it's a plant, it doesn't mean that's always safe. Plants have potent, powerful ingredients. Mm-hmm. So always make sure you're not taking a medication that could interact with that, or you're not having some sort of a surgical procedure and you need to talk to your doctor about stopping them before that. And the last point I want to make, not all the supplements are um, created equally. They would say, yes, you do have uh, a certain plant as an ingredient, but if it's not the specific tincture or the standardized product, it's not going to work. So it's very important to get a quality product Mm -hmm. because otherwise you're not getting what you're actually Mm -hmm. hoping for. As an integrative medical doctor, why do you think self-care is important in preventing sickness? Well, as you know, I think, uh, or we all know that conventional medicine is more of a reactive medicine. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, by the time you're seeing your doctor, you're probably sick. So self-care will stop that process. Self-care will prevent you from from getting there. Because once you're sick, it's harder, much harder to get back to well-being. If you have a chance to do a little bit of meditation, it's great exercise, it's a must, but also spend time with with friends. I think moral support and loneliness, or lack of moral support and loneliness, it's it's a big problem these days. That social connection, it's it's very important for for most people and see it's missing. 
and maybe just realizing that uh, you don't have to do it all mm -hmm. that external validation is not always uh, the most important thing yeah. thank you for teaching us today my pleasure <laughs> If you are looking for an integrative medical doctor here in Atlanta, we have Dr. Donna. She is located in Sandy Springs, Roswell area. Her practice is called Medical Creations Integrative Medicine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this episode. If you have any questions for me or to Dr. Donna, just leave us a comment below and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Thank you very soon. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. My missed appointment. Um, is my, I always forget to schedule or, or plan time off. Um, I really need to, to do better with um, scheduling more trips, um, even if it's just for a, for a weekend. Time to disconnect and, and just spend time with myself.